most people want to get a raise. They want to know how do I get paid more? How do I move to a position of leadership? And usually they're making one really big mistake. In this video, you're actually going to watch a training that I did with my team and my company. And you can actually see behind the scenes of exactly how to put yourself in the best position to win and rise to a position of leadership. So in this meeting, let's go ahead and talk about you know how to go ahead and make sure that you put yourself in the best position possible to get a raise, to get paid more. I think that's something that everybody here uh, would want to know how to do. Is, is that right? Yes. Okay, good, good. So here's what we're going to talk about is what's the roadmap to do that? Because this is something where sometimes people think they're working really hard, but really they're working hard in the wrong direction or they're working hard in a direction that doesn't actually matter to the company or their team. And for me, this is something that I, I learned early on. I learned it from a mentor and uh, I worked with a guy that, you know, is a billionaire and he introduced me to billionaires. And, you know, in that experience, I realized that there's really one thing that matters for every role in the company and that's production. Production is something that ideally eventually leads to revenue for the company because that is one of the purposes that all companies share is to make revenue and profit. So with that being said, each role in the company has a way that they can contribute to that. So for example, if I was looking at a salesperson, well, how do they contribute to revenue? Well, they go and they talk to clients that could, you know, work with the company and they actually get them to transact their card. How does customer service contribute to that purpose? Well, for them, they have to help clients have a good experience so that they come back and they buy again. In marketing, in our end, we have you know ads that we run and we have to get people to reach and say, hey, I'm interested in doing business with you guys. And then we also have a role that you guys are in, right? Which is social media management and editing. So when we look at that, how do you contribute to production? Well, for you, you contribute to production by increasing the amount of attention that people have on the company and the brands. So for us, if we get more people to have attention on the videos and the content and the company through social media, it's going to eventually lead to more revenue. And as time goes on, you could actually even track and know that, Hey, for every hundred thousand views that we get on social media, we get about a hundred people to you know, opt in and say, Hey, I'm interested in your product or service, you know, and then as time goes on, we'll even know out of those people that opt in out of the hundred, you know, we, we eventually will go ahead and have 10 of them buy something from us. And that's worth X amount of dollars. So it leads to that end goal. And it's something where you have to look at what is your final product. So your final product, if you're an editor is to go ahead and take, you know, a video, and actually sift through it, especially, so if you're, whether you're editing short form or long form content, the purpose is to sift through the original content and find the most engaging, interesting points that would be most likely to get views and go ahead and find that and then edit it in a way that's captivating so that people watch the entire thing. Because if they watch the entire thing, it's gonna go ahead and lead to more watch time. So that is something that you have to you know, be aware of. And ideally what you're producing, your final product is, whether it's short form or long form, is you're making, with the content you can work with, you're making the most engaging video possible that is going to get the most watch time possible to get more viewership, to get more views. And the reason why I'm saying, you know, viewership and getting people to view the content is because that's what the algorithms want. They want people to be on the video for 70, 80, 90% of the video, and then it'll actually start pushing it to the algorithm. So for example, on videos that we post on a brand new page, they get thousands of views. They have an 80% watch uh, duration on average. Right. So when we think about, you know, you doing your final product, you, you got to make sure that you're very clear on what your final product is and what you're producing. And that's the problem that a lot of people miss when they're working at a company, right? They, they, they don't actually understand what they do and how it leads to revenue. And they don't understand what they're really supposed to, you know, produce at the end of the week, at the end of the month, you know, at the end of the day. So 
for you, as long as you're working towards that goal and you're producing the most engaging possible videos that you can make, then you're working in alignment to your final product and it will eventually lead to revenue. So with that being said, how do you know if you're doing well? Well, you would go ahead and look at the result of the videos that you're doing. So for example, we have the same clips that you've edited on your end and there's another editor that edit the same one and his video got a few thousand views yours got 80 views so who's getting the final product or who's getting closer to the final product right so when you look at it through that lens it's something that allows you to actually take responsibility and here's the thing is this i understand that as time goes on and if you're working in the right company you're going to get better as time goes on but you want to be focused on that and look at you know, what could you do to, you know, improve in this case, you know, how engaging the content is to, to get as many views as possible. That's the thing that the thing that you can only control what you can control, right? So you're not going to be the one making the video. You don't have the original content, but what you can control is finding a way to make it as engaging as possible with the content you're presented and know that, Hey, if somebody else can do it, like if, you know, there's, there's two clips that we had that, you know, did really well on new pages that they got a few thousand views. And as time goes on, you know, that's probably going to, that's going to be bad for us. We're going to be like, man, it only got a few thousand views versus 10, 20, 30,000 views. Right. But right now that's good. So out of the clips we posted those two clips, they got a few thousand views. There are also clips that you guys edited They're, They just, they just got a few hundred views maybe when you edited it. Right. So when you're looking at your role, so whether it's for, you know, video editing, or let's just go ahead and talk about, you know, another role, um, like sales, if you're in a role where someone else has done it before and they're doing better than you and they're getting the final product. So for example, in sales, the final product is, you know, revenue collected and, um, number of clients that actually get onboarded. Right. So, you know, if I have a sales rep, that's, you know, bringing in $5,000 a month. And I have another sales rep that's bringing in $50,000 a month. I truly believe that the only thing separating them is the actions that they're taking and the approach that they're using when they're taking those actions. So what you have to figure out for your role is how do you reverse engineer and how do you look at what worked before, what was successful and how do you set up a curriculum for yourself to get better? Right. So for example, a curriculum for somebody that is maybe editing videos might be something where you have different subjects. One subject is cutting, like how to do jump cuts and how to, you know, transition from one clip to another. Another subject might be color grading. Another subject might be, you know, how to implement B roll or, um, different effects or animations during the clip. Another subject would be sound design and adding sound to create a better emotion and better pace for the video. Another subject could be, um, actually, uh, typography and the type, the type of font that's used in the video. You, you see, so you have these different subjects that you study and it theoretically, if you studied all of those different subjects and you got really, really good at each one, you would end up with a better final product in terms of what you can control. So every single you know day, every single week, that is what you're focused on. You're focused on, Hey, what subject should I get better at to improve the quality of my work? So for example, with, you know, Filmar who does, you know, a lot of our design stuff and you know, funnels and web design stuff, dude, Filmar studied, you know, graphic design. He studied color. I can tell he studied color theory. That's another thing that actually applies to video editing as well. Um, I'm pretty sure that Filmar studied typography as well, just overall using the, the technology to actually build funnels and websites. He studied uh, design process because Filmar has a design process where he does a, a mock-up PNG and then I sign off on it and then he makes it. So he studied design process where he's not just, you know, shooting from the hip and building, you know, something from scratch. Right. So, you know, you got to just think of what are those subjects and then where are you actually at on a scale from one to 10? Aside from that, you have to study, and this is probably more important than all of, all of those things or as important as all of those things combined is 
you have to study what is working in the marketplace. What is working for other people that maybe have a similar style or topic, you know, as we do and, and what is working from, you know, what's even working inside internally, right? So by doing that and constantly looking for inspiration in the marketplace, you're going to go ahead and find something that works. You're going to bring it into your work and assuming that it gives an increase in the final product and it improves it, you keep that there and then you add on to it. And then you see, did that improve the results? If it didn't improve the results, then okay, maybe I'm not, I'm not gonna do that, right? So the thing here is that a lot of people make the mistake of one, they find something that works. So for example, for you, Bea, you had something where you did color grading and that worked. And, and then you stopped doing color grading, right? You had, or, or for example, you, you know, we, we went and maybe there was like the first clip you did yesterday where it was every single piece of B-roll that you added into the clip was relevant to the words being spoken. And then on the next video, you know, where I'm talking about, you know, a path to success. And then, you know, there's, there's like a sky, just the sky floating and it doesn't really have too much relevancy to the clip, right? So point being is you have to be hyper aware of like, look, I made these mistakes before and now I'm, I fixed them and now I need to keep what's working, working. And then I'm going to go ahead and add onto it and test. And at the end of the day, that's what we're doing every single day is we are testing different theories and we're seeing how the marketplace responds to them. Cause at the end of the day, I can be like, man, that's the best video in the world and I really love it. But if it's not getting viewership and it's not in alignment with the final product, which is, you know, getting watch time and having people watch the video, then it doesn't really matter if I think it's a good video. That's how I truly feel. Or it doesn't matter if you feel like it's a good video. The market plus is telling us that we need to change the approach on what we're doing. And you, you, the part where you come in is that you have to become the expert in your field to identify what is the thing that's out? What is the thing that's not right? Because look, you can have, and this is where the expert comes in. You can have the same, I'm going to keep talking about video and editing, but this applies to any position in an organization. I could have two sales reps. One sales rep believes he's the best sales rep in the world, but he doesn't get any deals. Like, dude, there's something that you're doing wrong that Timmy's doing right. And that's why he's doing a hundred thousand dollars a month in sales. So my point's this is if I have two clips that are the same, this is where you want to get to and you become an expert in what you're doing. So if I have two clips that are, that are the same, I might go ahead and have clip number one, Let's just use this as an example. Clip number one edited the same exact way, the same graphics, the same B-roll, the same everything. But in clip number two, it has extra filler words. It has extra words that aren't needed to get the point across. And I, I, I post the two videos. One of them gets 100,000 views. The other gets 1,000 views. And that could be the difference. It could be the actual cutting of the clip and, and, and actually, you know, the way that it was cutted and, and the idea was presented, right? One of them could be more engaging and actually, you know, have good principles that get people to watch. And that's actually the other thing that you guys would study with video editing is even though you're not the one writing the script or you're making the script, you should know the format of a script to get more engaging views. So for example, like if I was going to add another topic, it would be short form script writing or script writing. Why would you want to know that if you were an expert? Well, you could be editing something that's really well edited and it's maybe even interesting, but because it doesn't have what's called a hook at the beginning, which a hook can be a controversial statement, a hook could be information, a hook could be, you know, this brand new thing. A hook could be something that is um, very uh, emotional. A hook could be something that's motivational. A hook could be something that's um, very authoritative. It could be these different statements at the beginning. Um, it could also just be a question as well. But if you look at what I said right now, it's cinema. So controversial, information, new, 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 emotional, 
motivational authority and it could be different types of statements that are in alignment with that and, and they, they they're things that would grab people's interest right and they could be framed as a, a definite statement or it could be framed as a question right so that knowing how to look for hooks would be a big portion of if the clip is actually going to do well that would that would determine the success of it with that being said going back to you know you as the the you know the operator of your job your job is to know these different aspects that make up your job and ideally you become an expert in them and you study each aspect of editing and then what happens is is you have that d data that knowledge and you make something and then you're able to kind of look at hey this video worked mine didn't work what's different about that video and then you can go through this mental checklist is it the sound design is it the actual b-roll is it the animations is it the fact that he had a better hook than i did he had a better statement or question at the beginning than i did was it the actual music in the background where it would do it wasn't the right music you know with the clip right and you can kind of go through this checklist of topics and subjects that you're knowledgeable about and figure out what was the thing that was different so that you could test you know doing that in the next video most people don't get to that point in their job or their field so what happens is is they they they, they end up with this feeling where like man my job's really hard i'm not getting the results i want Man, my job's really hard and dude, Timmy's just a better editor than I am. Man, my job's really hard and it's just it's it's I can't I can't make it work because whatever. And there's a they put an external reason outside of themselves. But I'm just going to say this, always always if you're not getting the results you want, there's usually one or two subjects or maybe multiple subjects if you're brand new at a role that you're not actually knowledgeable about and that's holding you back from getting the result. So if you come in at, at that viewpoint, that viewpoint is also a viewpoint of responsibility and control. And, and, and the difference between somebody that rises to the top and gets tons of different pay raises or hits different bonuses is the fact that they eventually have that viewpoint for themselves. I'm gonna give you an example. So like there's a guy that got promoted you know, in the company and now he runs the entire sales team. He didn't show up to work every day and say, man, I'm, I'm just not getting sales because of this, this, and this. I'm doing everything right. I'm not getting the results I want. He didn't show up to work every day and say that. What he said was, is, hey, you know, these are the areas that I know I need to get good at and I didn't get the result because I missed this point right here. And then I fixed it and then I got the result and that was his viewpoint and it allowed him to get better at his job to the point where he was truly an expert and he could sell... Here's what it is. He could correct himself and because he could self-correct and that's the goal, get to the point where I don't have to give you feedback or Alonzo gives you feedback. You get to the point where you can self-correct and by doing that because you can self-correct, guess what? When we add another editor, who's the person that gets promoted to a manager? Is it the person that can self-correct their mistakes? Or is it the person that keeps making the same mistakes? Who's more likely to help the new editor, right? So then it what happens is, is and this is kind of like what leads to the pay raises is, is, is because you get to that point where you're truly an expert at your field and you understand the different subjects that make up the field or the profession, you get to the point where you can self-correct and spot the out point and you know all the different components that make a great video and and because you can do that what happens is, is you start getting really good results you get good results the company grows it leads to more revenue and guess what there's another editor that's hired that editor's hired under you and now that they're hired under you you because you know how to self-correct you know how to correct other people and help them get better and and that's the thing that makes it undeniable that you'll get raises, like that you'll get raises and get moved into a position of management by understanding that one concept. And, and it's a it's a big concept, but understanding and really not just listening to it, but implementing it and, and, and using it to become a professional. So with that being said, let me go ahead and talk about the actual path, you know, to getting raises. Before I do that, though, any questions on what I just 
said right now, the last uh, few minutes. Okay. All right. So, okay, good, good. So the path to rising, getting pay raises, how to, how to get different pay raises. So most people believe that a pay raise is directly correlated to the amount of time that you work with the company, but that's not true. Every single day in America and across the world, people that have been with the company for five or 10 years are in the exact same position they were in at the very beginning. And you have someone brand new that came into the company and in three, six months, they are a manager over that person that has been there for five years. That happens every single day. You see about it in movies, you see about it in television shows, you have a friend that's been at a company and he hasn't been promoted in years and they actually hire a manager over the person. You hear about that every single day. And, and it's because most people believe that to get a raise, it's dependent on the amount of time they work with the company. That's not what it's about. It's actually the complete opposite. It's the amount of impact that you make in the time that you're working with the company. That is what gets you raises. The amount of impact that you make in the time that you're working with the company. So I can have somebody come into my company or come into you know a company and, and impact it in a way that improves the company and adds more revenue and, and improves the area. And because it's a really big impact, you know, and it leads to a lot of change in the right direction, they are the one that's most likely to get the raise and get promoted. So I had somebody that came into my company and they went in, in day zero, they started off just like everybody else. In 60 days, they eventually were running an entire team of 20 people. Why? Because they impacted the area. And when I say impact, I mean, they went and brought new solutions, new ideas to their area that led to one of the purposes of the company, which is to create more revenue and to actually get more people to want the service and product. And you could, and some people think, well, I can't do that. I'm just in customer service. I can't do that. I'm just in customer success. I can't do that. I'm just an editor. I'm just, you know, a videographer. I'm just a, you know, a guy running Facebook ads. I'm just a guy posting on social media. Every single role in the company is linked towards production and something that leads to revenue generation. There is nothing, if something like it, it, it's all, it all ties to that. And the thing is, is you don't have to, um, just come up with ideas to, to improve in your direct area. You can have ideas that are, you know, uh, you know, to the, to, you know, to the right of you, to the left of you. The thing is though, if you have those ideas, you need to be great at your job. Cause if you're the person that sucks at your job and you're like, dude, I got an idea here, here, and here, that's not going to do it. You have to be great at your job and actually be an expert in the profession that you, you know, came on the company. Okay. So assuming that someone understands that they actually are not going to get a raise or bonuses based off the time they're with the, with the company. And they understand that that's a false idea. People, 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 people that believe that will have a really hard time in life. People that believe that end up in the same position and they end up having this, you know, hatred or this feeling of resentment towards their employer because they see all these opportunities be given to people that are not them. And they're like, man, I'm doing all the right things. I'm doing exactly what my employer asked of me. The problem is they're doing just enough to be on the team. They're being doing just enough to get hired. And I'm telling you guys, whether you work with me for, you know, a year or you work with me for five or 10 years, if you can really get this down, you will go and, and put your family in a totally different situation in the next 12, 24, 36 months because I've helped other people do it. So let's just assume that we knew that that idea was wrong. What's the next thing that, you know, would help us kind of pave our pathway to getting raises and bonuses. Okay. So the first thing that I do when I go into a new area and let's just pretend I was you, I was an editor on the team. The first thing that I would be doing is I would be looking at the current situation of what exists right now and, and making sure that I understand every part of it that I could. 
So I would be asking like, hey, Alonzo, like where are we posting the videos to? Hey, Alonzo, what are the views on the videos? Hey, Alonzo, what clips do the best? Hey, Alonzo, what are the pages that, you know, we model like our content off? Hey, Alonzo, let me ask you this, like what videos get the most views, you know, and how long are they? I would, I would understand exactly what's happening right now and I would get a very clear understanding of that. And then once I had a good understanding of what's happening right now, I would go and figure out, dude, what is the ideal scene for this area? Hey, hey, uh, Nick, where do we want this to be at in the next 12 months? What, what's the goal? What's the target? Hey, Nick, what pages or what people do we, do you really like, you know, the brand that they built online? Which ones do you find, you know, inspirational? Which ones did you think really kind of capture, you know, the image? Hey, hey, uh, Nick, how many, how many views or how many pages do you think we'd be getting on a, you know, on a monthly basis? Like, like, you know, in a year from now, like what would be the ideal goal? Hey, Nick, how much revenue do we have to generate for us to hire more editors, like, like to have a team of, you know, you know, like just kind of like a ballpark, I would understand where we want to go, the ideal scene. So once I can have a, an idea of the ideal scene and where we're at now, that's where the gap's at. That's where the current state is the future state. Where do we want to go? That gap, that's where the problems are which they're not problems. Most people's idea of a problem is something negative that you want to avoid. But once you understand that problems are the areas where there are opportunity, where there is a problem, there is an opportunity. It depends on how you want to perceive it. If you perceive it as a problem and you avoid it, you will be that person that's in the company in the same exact situation. If you see a problem as an opportunity and you want to actually help find the solution to make it right, that is where you start to line yourself up to get you know raises and get bonuses and get put in a higher position of authority and, and leadership so and when i say raises i mean actually putting yourself in a situation where like hey we solved this problem we we actually started to do some revenue more revenue in this area and it's like dude you deserve a raise because we increased the revenue we increased the production from you know the company so with that being said, once I know the current state and the future state, we have the problems that exist in between. And that's where you can go above and beyond and actually show like, hey, I really want to help us win. I understand that to win, we have to do A, B, and C, whatever it is. And you would actually go ahead. And what I would do is I would look at those problems and be like, hey, you know what I noticed? Like every week we kind of have this thing where it's like, oh, I don't really like that. I don't like that but there's not, we don't have a clear brand guideline of things that are a hundred percent approved. So, so what I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do this weekend. It's going to make my job easier because, because I, I don't really like it when, you know, my manager and, and Nick, you know, tell me, I, you know, I, that, that, you know, they don't like the videos I'm doing because of this, this, and this thing. So what I'm going to do is I have all these notes down. I'm just going to make a brand guideline this weekend to help me but I'm also going to share it with Alonzo and I'm going to share it with uh, the team. And, and now you have a resource that made your job easier, but it also makes the team's job easier. And now we're rowing in the right direction. And obviously when you do that, you know, there might be feedback or tweaks or whatnot, but when you, that's just one example. But if you had that and you did it for other things as well, like, Hey, this weekend, you guys, I actually went and I noticed, I know we were talking about sound design, sound two weeks ago, and I actually went out there and I actually found these are all different people where they're, they're very similar um, industries, people, you know, in, in the business category. And, and what I did was, is I went and I actually found all the different music that they use. And, and we actually have it now on this document, um, I put it together and I was gonna see if we can get it approved. We can maybe add this to the brand document so that when we have music that we know is good and you know, you know, it's in alignment with the brand and, and you know, it's um, based off of videos that did really well. That would be another example. Another example could be like, you know, um, hey, there's actually three or four videos on um, animation, how to do this. And this is something that I noticed was in the top videos. And here's actually some resources. And what you're doing is you're finding resources 
for yourself. You're finding resources for yourself, but at the same time, you're making it into a resource that could be used by the team. And the thing that this is counterintuitive to is most people, when they think about this concept is they think of, well, dude, if I do this, I'm putting all this extra work in and yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it for myself to get better, but you know, I'm not getting paid more when I do this. They don't understand it's the same principle. Pay raises don't come from the amount of time or the amount of effort that doesn't get results. Pay raises come from more production. By making the resource, you're gonna be better at your job. By being better at your job, it's gonna lead towards more production, which is revenue, which, which is viewership that leads to revenue in your case, right? So. The, the thing that most people believe is, hey, if I do all this extra work or if I go out there and put these resources, it's going to hurt me long term. But it's not because so few people understand this concept. What it does is it just separates you and actually creates a bigger gap between you and Timmy down the street who's going to only do the bare minimum. And, and this is, this is a big thing that helped my brother. My brother, uh, runs a company that has a little over a hundred people in it right now, my little brother. And he worked with me for years. He started off in customer support. Then he did some, um, client success. And then he went and did eventually sales. And because he understand this concept that I'm sharing with you right now, he came into the company and because he would go and find the current state, the ideal state. And he saw the problems and he made resources and contributed to the company. And he had a big impact Dude, he was running the company in less than a year of hundred people. Why though? Because so many people believe the other principles and they don't do this. So when somebody does this, it's like literally dude, it's, it's like, um, it's like, you got a whole sea of, you got a whole crowd of people that are just below average, you know, or they're barely doing enough to, to ha keep their job. And then you have that one person that goes above and beyond and they stand out, they, they become a star in the group. So if we get the whole team thinking like this, the other concept is this is when you get multiple people in a group thinking like this and everybody operates like that, what happens is, is dude, that group as a whole wins more together. Right. So for me, when I go and work with, let's just say that for me, I'm working with a, a, a company or a friend. I know that if I help the guy next to me, win, I help the company win, I'm going to win because when you actually have a group, that's like, like, I'm going to say this, if you have one great player on a team, you're not going to win a championship. But if you have three, four or five people doing it, that's when like a really amazing things happen. And you know, it's something where I said this at the very beginning, you know, if you guys can take this and run with it, you will be in a really different situation for yourself in the next 12 months, 24 months, 36 months. And I'm saying that not because like, I believe it. I'm saying that because I've seen it with my own eyes.